everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And today I got a special guest all the way out in Switzerland working on a very cool project. We got uh, Luke Jode with Ariani. How are you doing today? Very good. Uh, hope you're doing well as well. Yes. Well, excited to learn more about your company and everything that you have going. But of course, before we get into that, I want to learn more about you. Can you give us some background on yourself? Of course. Uh, so my background, I'm an um, economics uh, uh, major that actually worked a bit in, a, in corporate um, as a financial analyst and then branched out to become an entrepreneur quite quickly um, because the, the corporate world was uh, was not really for me. Uh, and um, I started the first company that was in the renewable energy uh, uh, sector. Uh, it was a, a marketplace for renewable energy. So we worked with the um, large corporates um, like banks so in Switzerland, so so banks, insurance companies, uh, construction companies, uh, but also some local electricity providers to source uh, electricity from from small um, solar and hydro power producers, uh, and uh, ended up selling this company um, three years ago, right at the moment where I, uh, I mean. A, a, few, um, a few, a few, a year after I really got into crypto and, and, and actually started working on INE. But uh, I guess that's uh, that's when I'll, I'll explain how INE works. That, that we'll get there for sure. And you know, very interesting background. I definitely understand uh, the corporate world struggles of being like, ah, oh, this. I don't know if this is necessarily my path, and then pivoting into something that is more up your alley. So, you know, tell me about your first experience with cryptocurrency and blockchain. Like, how did you first learn about it, hear about it? And then what made you say like, wow, this is really cool. How do I find a way to get more involved? Yeah, so I think uh, the, the, really the first time I heard about cryptocurrency was not when the white paper came out. It was really 2013 um, with the uh, uh, entire... Um, and the, the Silk Road um, uh, part of you no know, story, uh, Bitcoin kind of uh, came in front and center there. I also had a friend of mine that was extremely into crypto uh, and, and I mean, blockchain, partic- uh, Bitcoin at uh, really at, at the mo- that moment, uh, who uh, who got me into the the, the subject. This being said, um, Bitcoin really never resonated with me. Uh, it, it was really something that I I, I mean I, that I understand, but doesn't really get me excited. Um, I definitely own some Bitcoin, but uh, it's not something that really made me decide to quit what I was doing currently at the time. Uh, that really changed when Ethereum was introduced. Uh, when Ethereum was introduced in 2015, um, I, I started becoming really interested. And as I mentioned um, right before, I had a, uh, a renewable, renewable energy marketplace uh, company. And uh, at that time, around early 2016, I had calls. Like people would call me and ask, oh, you do... Uh, energy traceability because energy traceability is a big aspect of actually being able to um, to uh, have a renewable energy marketplace uh, and uh, people were asking well wait if you do this you, you, you are you using blockchain i was like i'm not using blockchain um, but after a few <laughs> times i mean people ask me that question over and over again uh, i um, end up kind of like going down you know starting to look into it um, right. For some reason, at the time, there was a narrative that uh, energy traceability was a great application for blockchain. Um, after a few months, I realized that actually it's not. Uh, this being said, I, I think that's really where I, f- I fell into the rabbit hole, uh, and um, it went went uh, extremely. I mean, went deep and and, and really became enamored with the, the technology. Uh, then I, I I went on to um, to to actually look for a good application of blockchain. And that's when I found some of my founders or my co-founders uh, on Ariane who were working on a first uh, concept um, of using NFTs for for digital identity for uh, for luxury products. And here for me that that made sense. It clicked. So I, I really started working with them, and then quickly uh, actually had an opportunity to sell my company at the same time. So sold the the, the previous company and 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 co-founded uh, Ariane. Man, that's amazing. And talk about a timely product, right? So uh, NFTs are the buzzword right now. Everyone's trying to get in. Everyone's trying to see what is going on. And I definitely understand uh, the passion around Ethereum. So when I first got into the crypto space, um, I really resonated with Ethereum as well because it it made a lot of practical sense to me and Mm -hmm. the application of how you could build on top of it. And, you know, as I'm like looking at R&E and, you know, as soon as you're on the website, it says something, uh, the leading digital passport platform for all valuables. And I was like, man, that is such... An attention grabber, and it sounds like the way that you're doing that is turning these luxury items into NFTs. Can you just talk more about that and and what the the business model of Ariane is? 
Of course. Um, so the, the first thing to know is that uh, while well, NFT are all you know hot, and right now we, we do get a lot of interest for, for what we're doing because of the the NFT subject is uh, is, is super uh, front and center. Um, we've been here for over three years now, uh, so and we've gone through the the, the latest uh, bear market. So. Uh, right. Let me tell you that two years ago, NFTs were not as hot as they are today, and and it, we, we we stuck with it, uh, and now actually, you know, uh, it, it's nice to, nice to actually have uh, some some wind at, wind at our backs. Um, but so the the idea here is really to use an NFT as a, as a digital passport for your product. Um, what we're trying to create is really um, to bring physical objects, valuable objects, into a digital world. And so the way we do this is. Um, as we said, uh, with an with an NFT, um, and it's um, and, and and here there's the first way that it's seen by most of the brands that we work with is it's a digital companion, meaning it's like the the, the sidekick of your product. Um, so it enables um, to to actually um, a bunch of different uh, um, services such as uh, one click insurance, uh, easy resale. Um, it, it also enables like a global lost and found, um, but it also enables some some uh, another aspect that's extremely interesting for uh, for for the brands we work with, which was which is the idea of reconnecting reconnecting with the current owner of a product. Um, a lot of the brands we work with actually do not have uh, a direct connection with a large part of their uh, customers or with the people that own their products because they manufacture products, but don't necessarily sell it directly. They sell it via uh, retailers and here, because that digital passport is a peer-to-peer, -peer, um, uh, freely transferable uh, passport uh, for your product that proves that you own a real object. Um, the current owner always has this um, this this passport. Uh, however, it's a connection that's completely uh, anonymous because it's uh, you know it's it's, uh, it's an NFT like any other NFT, meaning it's in a, right. in a in a crypto wallet. So the only thing that you have to uh, to connect is is uh, the, 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 the public address. Uh, however, this is actually both an interesting thing because the you know for sure that you're talking to the current owner of the product, but it's also something interesting um, for the for, for people in the luxury industry because um, not, I mean, the, the anonymous clienteling is, is actually something that they're becoming more and more interested in. Uh, I, having Managing customer data is becoming more and more of a risk uh, both, both because there is a, of course, a demand from from customers that's growing to um, to not have all their data collected, but also right. because because hacks and, and regulations make it more and more complicated, more and more risky, uh, both on, on just on the communication aspect of things. And here, you know, Ledger uh, got a, a massive hack that that while it didn't actually impact their their core product uh it did have a big problem with their with their their customer base uh and um, and, and, and their their image um but so a lot of brands are, are actually starting to to not even want to collect data anymore uh and and, yeah. and that uh, that makes that, that makes Kowalski got a lot of sense because of that risk uh, factor uh, and also because it, it creates it but they, they still want to communicate with their with their customers and, and their product owners. And so here, the idea is to create a new way to communicate that doesn't actually uh, relay or lie on um, on personal data, but really on uh, uh, just the fact that you are an own, the owner of a product. Right. So that's cool that you can go and basically follow where your product ultimately ends up. Um, kind of just walk me through the process. Let's say um, I own a physical product and I want to use Ariani uh, to get this out to my potential in, in buyer. Uh, walk me through mm -hmm. the process of how I would get set up and then uh, of how everything else will work, even from when my product is eventually bought on the platform and, and so forth. Yeah, so the for a um, for, for a brand to to work with the Any Protocol, the Any Protocol is completely uh, uh, open source, so you can actually create tomorrow. Go on, uh, uh, we actually have a, a, a JavaScript uh, a library that enables you to freely create your, your certificates on the on the, on chain uh, we have a small fee uh, we, we actually subsidize uh, the, the the gas fees um, because we're on the side chain of, uh, of ethereum uh, for the for the for a big part of the protocol and, and a bit on the the main main net as well uh, to keep that connection with it but uh, we subsidize the gas fees and you have to pay um, about 10 cents about 10 cents of, uh, of a dollar um, but in our in, in our token called DD ARIA20, um, in, in order to create that certificate, um, what you need is a um, is a hosted um, 
you know, hosted JSON and uh, and all the the date, all the, the images that you want to link uh, link with, and then uh, the minting process really literally takes twenty seconds, and there's wow. you know twenty lines of code, um, so that's fairly easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's one aspect that actually relies more on our governance um, it, with the, with the nonprofit that manages the the, uh, the the consortium of brands that we work with. Uh, and, uh, and, um, here it's what we call the, the formal verification or like the, the brand ID of the, um, uh, of, of the brand that creates the, the, the product. Uh, and this actually is, uh, you have a staking mechanism, um, that will take you, uh, well, you have to lock a bit of, uh, of, um, but mainly it's, it's a KYB, uh, process. And here, the big thing that we're, we're solving with this, even though it's, it's, it introduces a bit of centralization. Uh, today is um, is to be able to say this certificate actually was created by this brand. Uh, so when we so today we work with uh, you know Brightling for instance, we validated their brand as their you know the entire KYB um, uh, on on to to very to make sure that the people we were talking with and using the protocol were actually Brightling. And this way you know that when you're creating an R, when you're buying a, a Brightling with an RNA certificate that says Brightling on it, it has been verified. Um, by um, by the IE uh, association, the, the, the nonprofit the measures of governance. Um, tomorrow, we're actually really looking into how we can completely centralize this process. But to me, that's still kind of like the aspect in, the, in governance that you know uh, requires a bit of a uh, of manual process. And if there's a manual process, it means uh, you, you need you need some some humans to to intervene. For sure, and you know to, to validate the the brand, the, the KYB know, know your brand. I think that's very important. Uh, that way, uh, you know, you're not getting uh, messed over because unfortunately, in some of these scenarios, you can have, you know, these NFTs that are being made by, you know, either these new brands or these brands that are claiming to be uh, mm -hmm. someone that they're not, um, yeah. which can cause plenty of problems as you get into some of these different uh, marketplaces um, where you think you're buying it from um, a established artist and it just turns out mm -hmm. someone else just got up there and, and spun up something. Uh, quickly, so I think that's an important yeah, aspect of I've, it as well. I've created a few uh, Beeple NFTs, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fortunately, didn't sell them for as much. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, no, for sure. And you know, one of the things that's I think really unique about Ariani as well is your kind of position in a place to continue to be a leader in this NFT space as more established brands try to come into this space. So kind of, can you walk me through a little bit of the roadmap of like, you know, where you presently are in a, a use case of some of the brand that's come on and has, has seen some success and where you think some future brands would be able to come on and, and what that would look like for them? Of course. Um, so we have um, 25 members uh, in the in the consortium to, to date and uh, we're adding some more almost every week. Uh, and uh, um, some of the most notable are, are the, the Brightling with Marc Piguet, uh, Vachon Constantin, uh, Vachon Constantin and, and Brightling, um, and also the brand Bash have uh, already launched um, a, on a, on first uh, collections, uh, and that started last year. The, the, the protocol itself is live since the end of 2019, uh, and the first brand that started uh, launching pilot projects on uh, last year, and uh, since January 1st, Brightling is the first uh, brand to have launched on their entire collection. So, meaning if you go to a a uh, store and want to buy a Breitling uh, watch, uh, you will get an RNA certificate uh, since uh, awesome. for, for since uh, January first. Uh, so the, the the process for the, I mean the the process for them was you know they started with a pilot project to, on a small collection. Like Breitling did that on the, the top time, which was like a re edition of a, a James Bond a limited edition of a James Bond uh, um, a vintage watch. Uh, and uh, when that works well, they, they, they moved on uh, later on to the, on the full collection. Um, one of the, the so of course, what we do with the, with, uh, the, the first thing we do with the, with the certificate is we replace the certificate of authenticity, which is a little piece of paper that you get into your uh, into your your box when you buy your your watch. Now there's a QR code that you scan to claim the, the digital uh, um, passport, the digital certificate of authenticity, uh, and you can get you can discard the, the paper. Um, it's also a proof of ownership, um, so so technically it can replace the uh, the, the receipt, um, and it's also um, the place where you 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 can record all the different information about your watch, meaning when you serviced it, um, who owned it in the past, but also um, you can imagine having uh, stamps for um, 
an event, a special event that you've been to. You can see like, oh, this watch went to, uh, I don't know, the, the 24 Heures du Mans or, or to, uh, or to uh, Roland Garros to stay in, the, <laughs> in France uh, and, and, and have like bring history, like a, like actually record history of the product. Yeah. Uh, it gives also a bunch of information on how the, the product was produced, of course. Uh, and, the, the, and then when you talk about integrations with other, um, with, with other service, uh, one of the things that Brightling did actually was integrate their, their e-warranty system uh, so now when you claim a certificate, it launched automatically the e-warranty. Uh, it's like a five-year, I think, uh, uh, don't quote me on that. I think it's a five-year warranty or three-year warranty um, that uh, that is launched automatically. Uh, and uh, and then when you need to actually contact the uh, the customer service, you can do it via uh, the certificate. And the certificate today is in a is in an app that that we developed but the certificate of course is is a uh, is crypto so it could be in any you know crypto wallet that anybody would uh, would, would produce uh and uh, and here in the app you uh, you just click on your certificate uh and say contact brightling and uh, and then you get a, you, you can start chatting once again without having ever given any of your personal information yeah wow that is super cool i mean i definitely and, and i'm sure for a lot of people listening you know just seeing how Impressive that is. I remember one of the first like watches I've ever bought was like back when I was in college or uh, university and um, it was a Swiss franc and I was very proud of this watch. And one day I know that I had like a three year warranty and I, I think I broke it mm-hmm. year two, but I didn't go through the process of like going to get it fixed. And it would have been cool because, mm-hmm. um, again, I love that watch. I used to wear it all the time to be able to like track it and be able to show like the full history. Um, so that, you know, in the in the future, whether I gave it to a, a future kid or I gave it to someone else or I wanted to sell it, I could show its true value because it was truly being marked that entire time. Mm-hmm. Like that is super cool. Or the fact that like if someone had a piece of jewelry or, or, or a piece of clothing or whatever it is and they wanted to go and sell it, they could really go and point to the history of like all the things that have happened. And like, man, that is that is really unique and powerful, man. That's that's really cool. Yeah, no, we we think so as well, uh, and uh, and and really, that's that's one of the the great um, uh, value proposition here. Uh, the 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 second one is is really that aspect of also of um, being able to to get a, a an instant feedback uh, from um, from a brand without having to prove that you actually own you know the true object, because uh, a lot of time you know to get access to. Uh, to um, to the repair and to 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 talk with a with a customer agent for those you know high uh, value products, uh, they, they the 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 brand is actually going to ask kind of like a, a proof that you actually own uh, one of their products. Uh, actually, one of the brands that we talked with uh, told us that they they launched uh, a couple of years ago a VIP program um, where uh, the only thing you had to do was to um, to register, which is to go on there and enter manually the model that you actually own. Uh, and then you would enter into the, the model of their product that you actually own. And then you would enter into their VIP uh, program, which you had like special deals and special relationships. Uh, except their issue was that they had more people sign up than watches that had been sold. Mm. So meaning like people who, were, who did not have the, <laughs> the, the product uh, could actually... Uh, um, uh, had actually joined the VIP uh, program, which I mean can be a good marketing strategy. But for those really, you know, for those valuables or high end kind of like exclusive products, the the, the idea is that you you want to you really want to target the people that actually own your product because your your VIP program is 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 a loss leader. So you're trying to create a special experience for the people that actually uh, are your your true customers. Yeah, I, I mean, and having that validation, being able to to sift through the the people that always try to find a way in um, would be very unique. I mean, I even see this being a, a protocol that could be applied to like sneakerheads, right? These these exclusive shoes that drop and you always want to know like, okay, well, are these actual, uh, for example, uh, Yeezys versus Feezys and like um, even yep. Jordans and everything else like that. And even seeing like where things establish and like truly being able to look at, you know, were these original ones that dropped um, in like the 1980s and then like who all owned them and X, Y, Z. Like, I mean, that is super cool that all of this like type of products are starting to be blocked uh, or put on Ariane and, and blockchain. And, and, and I, there's a lot of use case for this. So, you yeah, know, for sure. great job for getting in this, staying through the, the bear market because I know how tough <laughs> that was. Um, but sticking with it and just seeing where this is going. I mean, there's I think there's a fun a uh, decade in front of us. And I think our position yeah. to, to do really well, because I mean, there's so many use cases 
for what y'all are doing. Indeed. Indeed. And, 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 um, and absolutely when you talk about sneakerhead, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the, of course we started with, uh, with watch, uh, with watches because that's, that's kind of where there was a, 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 a first uh, product market fit. Uh, right. but, uh, the new luxury is streetwear, uh, and, and sneakers, uh, is the, is the, uh, the Rolex, you know, a pair of Yeezy is the, the Rolex watch of, uh, of the, the new generation. And uh, we've already started working with, um, with, uh, actually one, um, a sneaker company called Satoshi studio who, uh, who was actually really, uh, in the crypto, um, uh, environment. Um, and, uh, and we're, we're actually preparing another launch with another, uh, kind of high beast, uh, <laughs> sort of a sneaker head, which I, I can't talk about right now, but, uh, um, stay tuned. They, 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 we have more things coming on the sneakers, and, and definitely, you, I mean, you put your finger on it. It's yeah. a, it, it's a promising market. Man, that's super exciting, um, and definitely looking forward to to watching this as this elevates, and, and definitely see how valuable this is. Um, but to shift gears just a little bit, uh, you know, there's a lot going on in the entire crypto blockchain market right now. Uh, as we head into this next decade, I mean, from 2010 to 2020, there's a lot of growth in the field. Um, but I think we're starting to see a turn of page and starting to see like even higher velocity of, of growth and innovation and opportunity uh, in this landscape. What are some things that are happening right now that has your attention that you're continuing to follow? Well, for us on the technical side, the big question is uh, is layer two. It's like, how do you actually um, get to uh, uh, be able to do all the cool things that are being done right now uh, on Ethereum, but for... Uh, but I, and, and I'm talking about the the for this decentralization, the fact that it's a decentralized protocol, but also all the the composability, meaning like the kind of Lego uh, that that exists in, um, in, in on Ethereum. Meaning I can uh, you know uh, take a or put some collateral on Aave, take my tokens and put them in uh, uh, on Curve, and then get it to get the yield uh, maximized by uh, by Yearn. Like all those are different projects. Um, that uh, that are, are composable together. Um, what uh, what I'm really interested in is, is to see how we can actually do this. Um, but uh, today, because of the, the fees on uh, on 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 Ethereum, it's 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 uh, close to impossible to do it for things that are not you know pure financial assets. Uh, so layer two is something that we're looking uh, looking into uh, a lot. We, we've deployed on a layer two. Um, but now we're, we're really considering like deploying on, on several layer twos because there's still not a clear winner for, for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but so one that we're really, the, 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 I think the two that we're most interested in today are, uh, Matic. Um, I, I, I think that they're, they're really, uh, really ahead, uh, and already a lot of the things that, uh, that we want to do are, are doable, uh, on, on Matic I mean, now. Polygon, Polygon, Polygon. Yep. yeah. Uh, XDAI is something we're really interested in, uh, which was actually, a, a, it's, it's a, um, I was started by, by the same people who started the, the POA network, the, the section that we're using at the moment. Uh, so XDI really interested. And then there are plenty of others that we're looking into as well, um, uh, but still in the EVM compatible. Um, we are a, a partner of um, Luxo uh, Network. Uh, Fabian Fokersteller is, a, is, a, is an advisor on the project and quite interested in what he's doing. The, the protocol is still not live, so it's still a bit difficult for me to, to, to say anything, but I mean, great team behind that. Uh, and then there, there, there are, um, you know, plenty of things that are being, uh, being put forward. Uh, I'm interested in what near is, uh, is, is promising. Uh, so plenty of things you look at, but to me, it's really the, the layer two is, is, two. is a, a big, big subject. And, um, Matic for me is, is really, uh, really interesting. I like what they did with the, with the quick swap team, you know, the, that fork of, uh, of, um, uh, Uniswap is um, really interesting what they're doing there. Um, mm-hmm. So, so I think that the first one we're exploring is probably going to be Matic, but uh, the the other ones are, are you know, they all, all have uh, a lot of arguments for themselves. They do, and you know, you bring up a really good point. And I, I like to tell people, and especially our listeners, if you hear something enough times, uh, repeat it repetitively, pay attention. Um, so, mm-hmm. you and probably the last like five or ten interviews I've done. I brought up layer two. Layer two has been brought up almost every time, right? And so it is very important to see how that's going to shake shake out. Um, and I think it's going to be, we're in this like crucial point. I think a lot of people say within like the next six to 12 months of how this is going to work out and whoever can really, I don't want to say conquer, but solve this potential issue, but can really build something that's going to last, like can soar. And there's just so mm-hmm. much uh, potential 
um, in this space. And, and like you said, I think um, La Polygon is a, is a, a good mover in there. And I think there's some other ones to be looking out for as well. We recently had to launch up with Numio. Be looking out for them as well. But but yeah, man, I, thank you so much for, for putting that on everyone's horizon and, and sharing that with us. Uh, a fun question I'd like to start asking uh, the speakers who come on the show is if with all the knowledge that you have today, if you could pour all that knowledge and give yourself some first steps back when you first got started, what would you tell yourself? Oh boy, I, there are a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> I think um, we, we the, the the most important thing is it's going to take time. But basically, that's uh, that's really the uh, the thing that sometimes you uh, you kind of forget. Uh, I mean, we always had kind of a long term you know, vision on it. Um, but especially when we started in, in, you know, we started in late 2017, the, the entire kind of ICO craze took off. Uh, we ended up doing an ICO as well, in a, uh, but at the beginning of the bear markets, like the, the second half of 2018, uh, mm-hmm. which, uh, which we managed to, to, to actually raise enough funds to, to do this, uh, this project. Um, but there were so many times uh, where, where, you know, it really felt like, oh, wow, this is going to be just like an overnight success and, 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 uh, and, and it's going to be done in, uh, in, you know, in three months, we'll be, we'll be everywhere. Um, and, and, and then, you know, you realize that things should take time to, to, to become, uh, to really uh, become concrete and to build uh, where we are at now, three years later. Uh, and in a way, I think that's, that's if, if uh, you know, I have an advice to kind of give myself, but also people, uh, like myself three years ago and myself today and people today is that I feel like we're kind of in the same, in, in the same, uh, moment right now, meaning there are a lot of really cool things that are going on. It's showing the future. Uh, and, uh, and it's, it's going to continue, I think for, for, for a good deal of 2021. Um, so it, it's exciting. Just everybody should, should realize that it, it's going to keep, it, it's going to take time to actually, uh, um, uh, you know, build something selling, get it all done and just don't, um, you know, don't, don't become desperate when at the end of the year, you know, the craze is, is, a, has died down a little bit, let's say, uh, and that you have to put your head back down and, and go to, and, and you know, go work at it, uh, again. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a long process, but, uh, honestly, it's a rewarding and enjoyable, uh, process. For sure. I mean, I think that is a great piece of advice. Uh, this thing takes time. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think a lot of people think that, um, or take for granted that like, oh, just like you said, it's going to be overnight success. Like everything's running high, but like you got to be able to ride the waves of, yeah. of, of the highs and lows of entrepreneurship and success and building a company and, and what it takes. And it's all, I mean, ultimately I believe it's all going to be worth it, but like the ones who have built in, are building to last, the ones that are building for the future are going to be the ones that make it and ultimately mm-hmm. soar. So I definitely agree with that sentiment and I definitely appreciate that. And I think that's a great reminder for all of our listeners here today. But, you know, um, Luke, you've dropped a ton of great knowledge on us. You shared a lot of great things that's going on with Ariani and uh, where that's headed. But what is the final thought that you want to leave with everyone listening here today? Well, I, I think, um, you know, get ready to weather the storm, but I mean, enjoy also the moment. I mean, right now there are so many cool things going on around the NFT uh, uh, space um, that it's, I mean, it's the fun moment. So, I mean, enjoy it. Remember that, you know, it's uh, there, there's also a lot of hard work uh, for the for the coming years, uh, but um, definitely enjoy and have have fun also with it. Um, and uh, just in general, when it, it comes to to Ariane, um, we're we're really starting to to we worked uh, really hard to get uh, a bunch of uh, top brands to uh, to join the, the the project. And now we're we're trying to actually get um, uh, more of a, more uh, individual creators and 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 uh, really uh, fans of uh, you know uh, of fashion and, and luxury to get involved so um we were really looking for people to, to come uh, participate give us ideas uh, uh we are we're really open to um to to any suggestions or things we should build so um we're on discord we're on telegram if you just go on our on our uh, website rne.org you'll find all the links um and uh, and i'm really looking uh, looking forward to um to have uh, some of uh, your listeners come in and join us and and you know help us build this thing because there, there are a lot of things to be built by us and also by the community. Once again, it's an open protocol, so anybody can uh, can actually build on top of what we're uh, on top of the certificates we're building. And there are there are a lot of things, the cool things to do. So um, definitely get in touch uh, where we're uh, our door is wide open. Awesome. 
I definitely appreciate that. And everyone listening, make sure you definitely go check this out. Um, for everyone that wants to do that, what are some ways that people can connect with you and also learn more about Ariane? Yeah, so we uh, so the Telegram and um, and and Discord are, are really the, the places where um, where you can have a conversation with us. Um, otherwise, I mean, Twitter uh, R N E Project uh, is the handle. My handle is uh, Luke Jode. Uh, happy to, to 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 discuss there as well. Uh, and uh, to learn more about the the, the project itself, um, go on um, R N E dot org. Uh, you have all the technical documentation, all the, the details about the, the, the governance and the, the, the brands are involved in the project uh, and some use cases. Um, so uh, I think if you start uh, start there, that uh, that should get you uh, most of the information. Otherwise, once again, reach out. Uh, we're really happy to talk to, to all of you guys. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for dropping all that great information. Everyone listening, make sure you go check that out. And of course... For everyone listening, stay cryptocurrent. Today's podcast is brought to you by Tantra Labs, where you can earn 12% in Bitcoin and Ethereum yearly. Tantra Labs is a team of researchers, engineers, and data scientists, economists, and optimists whose primary focus is in Bitcoin, which they believe will usher in a more prosperous future built on sound money. They offer real-time loan tracking, fast automated onboarding, 100% payment history, and multi-sig storage. And again, you will get 12% APY on the crypto that you loan. Tantra Labs is taking on international clients as well as clients in the U.S. except for the state of New York. For more information, please go to tantralabs.io. Again, that's tantralabs.io.